It is often believed that every great movement or establishment started off as a thought. On behalf of Marilyn Gaston, I wish to welcome you to Mon Repo. Mon Repo, which means my peace, or another translation, my place of rest, Mon Repo. My name is Marilyn Gaston. I'm from Mon Repo. And um, I have started a, an organization called In the Pink. And it pertains to us finding more about cancer and the causes. And what is causing most of our people to be dying of cancer today? Today, we have been called again to join Sister Marilyn Gaston in the battle of awareness against this most common, vicious, and destructive enemy, cancer. Now you mentioned that you got a vision. Can you give us a little detail of what exactly did that vision tell you? The vision told me that I had to be like a messenger. For years I've heard and seen and I lost my dad to cancer too. So many people are dying of cancer. And I was told, and why not start something to create an awareness? Make people aware of our surroundings. We can eat better. We can fight cancer. We don't let, have to let it get the better of us. So one day I had this little dream of having a tea party. And I love tea. So I said, tea always brings people together. We can sit at a table and have a high conversation. That's how I saw it. So my first invitation last year, that's what it said, I invite you to a high conversation. That's what I told people. And they were wondering what I was talking about. So I had it and then it was a great gathering. I had other doctors on board last year and this year it was a different set of doctors. And that's how I saw it. The doctors would come, the people who have had cancer would come and other people would share their views on cancer. We all know that cancer has no friend or favorite and does not discriminate. It has no respect for innocence, age, gender, person, faith, or social status. After the first one, did you find that there were more discussions in the community about cancer? More people are coming to you with cases or stories of cancer? Yes, because we, what I also saw in the vision was to destigmatize cancer and make people aware that um, they do not have to be afraid. So after the first event, people were coming to tell me, you know, I had such and such or my auntie had such and such. And we didn't know what to do. But since we came and we heard other people telling what they experienced now, we know we can do something about it. We don't have to hide anymore. So there is help, and I'm happy that this is an eye-opener and a mind-opener for the people of Monrepo. I cannot do the whole of St. Lucia, so I'm hoping other communities around will do the same thing and share my vision. I, this is my first opportunity here sharing with uh, Ms. Marilyn Gasto and her team of persons, whom I commend, along with um, Nancy Senkwa, Glenn, and everybody who has worked hard to put this together, and obviously the community of Monrepo. I can see this event growing in leaps and bounds, that we now have the coverage of media, and we have other colleagues from the medical fraternity um, sharing with us. And this is the kind of activity that we'd like to see around the island. I was very happy that it hit home with the medical fraternity. We had the pathologist Dr. King, Dr. Bristol, Dr. Bird was there, and Dr. Owen Gabriel. And the people were very attentive. And on Monday, a lot of them told me, thanks, thanks. I told them, don't thank me. I'm doing it. It's not for me. I don't, if my name wasn't mentioned, I would even be happy. But 
I'm not doing it, I don't care about me, but it's for you, it's for the people. What is it that you heard there that caused, that probably certainly solidified your belief in what you're doing, but certainly will now cause you to even take a greater interest, a greater, um, more action in terms of awareness on cancer? Well, from Dr. King's um, PowerPoint, and he referred to the piece that I did a lot, not knowing the two of them would link, because cancer does not respect any part of our body. It doesn't respect anybody, any race, anything. It just does what it has to do. And I was listening to Marilyn during a uh, poem, and I, she's, she, what she was talking about allows me to speak a little bit about the stage of cancer. When we doctors talk about staging cancer, we talk about how far the cancer has spread, how large the cancer is, how far it has spread. Has it gone to the glands? Has it gone through the blood to the bones, or to the liver, or to the lung, or to other parts? Because this is what cancers do. I will not give up because this is serious. When I heard Dr. Bristol talk about the, the he, um, we're trying to find out what is causing this. He spoke about the, the pesticides and the chemicals and our food and our water. And we have been wondering here, what is it? Is it our water? Is it our food? I've had a concern. If you ask me what causes cancer in San Lucia, I'd say one of the biggest causes probably has to do with the residues in our foods and our water. We depended on bananas here for decades in St. Lucia. I, I remember seeing the spray planes coming over the Monaco Valley, all the high tension wires have their big balls on them. People probably wonder what those mean now. But that was getting into our water and into our food and into everything else. His contribution was great about taking care of ourselves and going to the doctor, seeking second opinions. Miss Dorothy Philip, as well from the Faces of Cancer was here to give people hope, to tell them that she has had 14 surgeries and she's still battling cancer. Okay, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Dorothy K. Philip. I am the founder and president of Faces of Cancer St. Lucia. I am also a nine-year cancer survivor. Actually, this year is my ninth year. All of this combined together, I think has strengthened us and to give us to move forward to finding a cure to cancer, to teaching our people to eat better, to have our backyard gardening, we can grow what we eat because what you eat is who you are. That's what I believe in. And we can have compost and stop this chemical business because I think this is detrimental to our health. With this toxic world that we are living in, we can take control in that regard. I'm Marilyn, my next door neighbor in the US. <laughs> we actually live in the same state. Um, thank you very much. Well, Miss Dorothy Philip and I, we, we have been speaking like over a year because um, I met her when I did it the first time on the phone. I got diagnosed with breast cancer two years after I returned to St. Lucia. I did live in the U.S. for a number of years and I decided to return to St. Lucia. And we have been speaking a lot and um, I invited her. She told me she was in St. Lucia. And then she asked me to keep it on that date because she really wanted to come. And she has been giving me support and told me to continue and telling me of her um, struggles with getting people together and helping cancer patients because this is an expensive illness to deal with. And um, I hope you guys in Monrepo will open up your hearts towards your fellows in Monrepo because we do know Monrepo has a high rate of cancer, so there are people out there with cancer, whether they open enough to say it or not, but we're hoping that you guys will make a difference. And um, anybody that wants to assist us or join our group, like I said, we have Faces of Cancer Mabuya Valley in the Valley and Faces of Cancer in Castries. You could see me afterwards. Thank you very much. Hello. 
write this poem in like two days because my brain was going round and round. I'm saying, what am I going to say this time? Because the last time I did another excellent piece. It was called Cancer Seba Ume Kapale. So this time around, in two days, I'm like, what am I going to tell cancer this time? Because I am just quarreling with cancer. <laughs> Anytime I have messages like that, it comes to me to deliver it in our queer language. Hello! Something tells me that it will hit home harder and it will be well received. The message will go out in our Creole language, which I hold dear to my heart and I appreciate very much. And I, and I am a member of the Folk Research Center and other cultural community. And I will never let my Creole go down because this is who we are. That's the language I think the people can identify with. So when I sat down and I'm like, what will I say? I say cancer attacks, brain, skin. So I said, I'll name my poem Zoe Pilapo. <laughs> so I said, I'll call it Me Pipu Kanse, because that's what I was telling it. I got a phone call, and then I answered the call, and in there it was telling me, tell the people, I'm coming for you, I'm coming for you. So then I gave it the answer to say, we will not let go, and we will always have be at battle with you, because we are going to win. We must find a cure. So you can let our population and generation and on to generation survive. You being somebody who's also a collector, we noticed that you use the old phone, the traditional phone. Was it deliberate that you put that phone in there? Yes, because <laughs> I also told cancer, because of the radiation and what I've been learning about, like people use a lot of cell phones and those gadgets and people have, asked, have been cautioned of how they used it. So I know that uh, old time phone, <laughs> I'm a collector and I believe in my artifacts. So. I got the call on this one, so I took it instead. <laughs> This evening is another moment of great significance and consultation. And the consultancy is free. Compliment, Sister Marilyn Gaston. I consider myself a humble servant of the people in any regard because I feel tackling this and having this vision is also part of my heritage. Taking care of the people is our culture. We have to look after each other. 
and um, I will continue to do whatever I can. And then there's this hospital that I go to in uh, New Jersey where I live. I uh, have a relationship with the people there. So whenever I go, I beg for stuff, literature and so on, or from the American Cancer Society, so that people could read stuff because reading is power. Reading is good knowledge. So at least I have bookmarks and things on different cancers and how to eat and so on. So I, I really will continue to learn as much as I can and to come and share with my people. And we will do whatever we can and we have to involve the younger ones because this affects them too. And when we will no longer be able to, we have to have people to continue. So the younger ones, we need them on board. From the um, pronouncements from Dr. Bristol. There's a family from Monrepore I looked after. The mother and two sons had pancreatic cancer and died of it. And I just said, like, I've never come across in my entire practice where you find three family members. I mean, maybe something genetic, but no, they were from Monrepore. And I always have a concern, and that's one of the reasons that I said I really wanted to come today to challenge everyone to make sure that we push to have a national cancer registry. We need information to be able to make proper policy decisions. Otherwise, we're gonna waste the limited resources that we have. It appears that there's an, an abnormally high number of cases of cancer in Monrepo. First of all, how concerning is that for you? And what is there to indicate that what Dr. Bristol is saying is actually on the right path? I remember once I was watching the TV, I do not remember the forum who was seated there, but I heard the doctor said something about Monrepo, that there's a very, very high rate of cancer. Um, subject correction, I think he said stomach. I heard it. He said that. And so I'm like, really? And from my observation, many people here have died with cancer. A lot of people, everybody you have, every other person is, she had this cancer, he had this cancer, even children. Some young men, we have lost her to cancer. So that is all of what I'll never give up because I'm wondering what it is in Monrepo. Is it the soil? Is it the water? We were told at one time that we had the best water in Monrepo, but now I am hearing stories about pigs are in the water up there, the, the, the Koshon Mawon wild pigs. And the, they have been begging the authorities to check about this thing, and it's not being done. I heard of other stories, so the authorities need to take a step. Then out of my observation a few years back, I realized the Monrepo Health Center, it was called at the time, was covered with asbestos. And we know what asbestos is. It is poisonous, it is deadly. So I realized that m many people who lived around here have passed with cancer. But we used to consume that water, which was coming from this roof, going to a tank in the back, an old tank. I don't remember what the tank is made of. And we used to consume this water. So when they came and they took this out, they dumped it there and um, they installed those plastic, those plastic ones. And many people, I, I, like I said, who have consumed this water have died of cancer. Oh my God, this is, what is this made of and what is the inside of that light? Yes, this is an artifact right here because to me they can't go anywhere with nah, that. Nah, that's yeah. Now, do you know my cousin who lives at the back there? She used that water her whole life. And she was uh, selling vegetables. She used that water to irrigate. And she had a one massive tumor on her face. It was a red case of cancer. She died of it. She suffered so much with this tumor on her face. And I think that had... That, that contributed to it. This is where it was uh, installed. So 
I'm wondering whether that this was not a contributor to it. And some of the nurses who resided at the health center at the time they had resident nurses there, they too died of cancer. So I'm wondering if that is something that can be looked into to know whether this was the cause. And that old tank is still there at the back of what is called the wellness center right now. And I'm wondering if there are not places people are still consuming this. And I recall the day that the health center was being uncovered. There were some men, if they can remember who they are, were uncovering this roof and they did not have masks. My brother was here at the time and he took the photos. I have them. And these things spread around Monripo. So I'm wondering if this did not contribute to some of, of, of those people that we have lost. Because when I counted with another lady, we found out over 15 people in the vicinity who died with cancer. Uh, I remember also, I wanted to make this point, when I, I used to go a lot with my dad to the uh, MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas, and one day the doctor asked my dad, um, Mr. Gaston, have you ever lived or worked near asbestos? Because they saw that in my father's system, and that was long before I was born, because my dad worked when they were building the health center, and he worked at St. Jude's as well. So this thing is really dangerous for all this time, my age and, and at that age, they still saw that in my dad's system. So asbestos is really a dangerous thing. <laughs> meeting here was a quite a successful one. I suspect it will be ongoing um, because of the success of, 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 of the two you've had so far. You will be obligated to continue it. And it's amazing to see all of you guys here together tonight for this cause. This is a very important cause, so you can give yourselves a round of applause. You're ready or are we not ready? You ready to go? What is it in the right, meantime that you want to see um, residents of Mount Ripo do? And I, I suppose prevention is one of the key things. What is it that you want them to do in the meantime to safeguard themselves but also to be more aware of cancer the people of monipo the group that is in uh, the process of being formed will see to it that um, they have workshops and seminars to sens further sensitize the people and host activities host food fairs and stuff like that to show the people how we could have healthy living healthy lifestyles to battle cancer because this is a toxic world we have to face the reality so we have to take all steps to um, prevent ourselves from getting further into it it doesn't matter who you are you can still reach for the stars with a dream inside your heart you can turn the world around there are homeless in the streets Children still need food to eat So tell me what's it gonna be? Should we be silent or work together? Imagine a world where we're laughing together No matter the color, we love one another My brothers and sisters, let's lift up each other Unite Oh, I can hear you singing so sweet A world where we're living together No matter the color, we love one another My brothers and sisters, let's lift up other unite. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now that I have planted a seed, I would like my community to embrace it and feed it, fertilize it, nurture it, and keep it alive for our good. I will not be here for until the end of time. So whoever is there, young folks, take note because when we are getting older, I have ailments, so I need your support, I need your help to let this seed grow. Imagine a world where we're living together, no matter the color, we love one another, my brothers and